Power Apps just quietly dropped a brand new card control into preview. We built our very own Fluent 2 card component on the channel before, so this should be a very interesting comparison. Join me in this video where we take a first look at the new modern card control in Power Apps. Channel members have access to download the apps used in the videos as well as the YAML code used in the components that I showcase. You can click the join button below the video if you're interested in supporting the channel. If we look at our controls on the left hand side, we can see the new modern card control. The card control is really a container for holding information and actions related to a single concept or an object, like a document or a contact. Cards really elevate the prominence of information, and they also create a predictable pattern for your users. Card controls are typically made up of a card header, a card preview, and a card footer. And in this case, the card control inside of Power Apps is only made up of that card preview and the card header. If we look at the properties of the card control, we can see there's a lot of customization for us. The direction of the card control just specifies whether the preview and the header are aligned vertically or horizontally. So we can see vertical here and over to horizontal here. We're also given three text fields for the cards, title, subtitle, and description. As we entered the description there, you could also see that it just kind of popped into the card and the contents of the card readjusted itself to accommodate the addition of the description. This is great to see because it looks like there was a lot of thought put into this control to make it very responsive out of the box. If any of these text or image fields are empty, they actually readjust themselves in the card control so that they're not taking up empty space for their placeholder. For example, if we remove the title and the subtitle, we can see the image takes up the remaining space. If we remove the description, now the only thing left is that small header image. The two image properties that we have are the image and the header image. So the larger preview image is the actual image property, and you can see the default value of that is the new sample card image. The header image is what contains that smaller icon next to the title and subtitle. Again, if we remove the sample card header image, the title and subtitle take up the new space in the card. We have two properties related to the preview image, and that's the placement and style. The placement is just whether that image is before or after the header text. So if it's before, then in the vertical direction, the image is above, or if it's after, then it's below. We also can set the behavior of that image, so whether it's center or fill, fit, stretch, or tile. Scrolling down to the bottom, we also have two properties for the style and theme. The border radius can be set as zero if you want straight corners to your card, or you can set it to a higher number to get a nice rounded edge. We also have a drop shadow property, which has the same options as the container controls. The last thing to call out property-wise is that the control has one single on-select property. We'll look at some of the differences in a moment compared to the Fluent2 card component that we built on the channel, but one major difference here is that we're not providing individual buttons on the card, but rather one large button over top the entire card control. This is pretty much treated like any button, so we can trigger notifications or navigate functions or anything like that from the on select property. Let's move on to testing out this card control and see where we can apply it. One of the downfalls with components is that they can't be inserted into gallery control. So the first thing we can try out is whether we can insert the card control into a gallery. And it does look like that is the case. This makes it very easy to set up a repeating card that you can iterate over your data source with. We can give our cards some different values from a gallery, like some random food items and some prices. And just by plugging those values into our card control, it's populated across all of our gallery items. I think the focus here and the benefit that this brings is that it's very easy to create something in a short amount of time that looks very modern and user-friendly. There are a couple things to keep in mind as you start to use this control. And the first one is that you kind of have to be careful with how much text you put into the card. While the card is supposed to only provide bite-sized information to the user, if we add some extra lines to our title and to our subtitle, 
the behavior for both of those is to trail off to an ellipses when there's actually more text than it can display. There's no tooltip to either of those, so you can't actually see what text is obfuscated there. The description is a little bit different because with this, it actually uses the preview image space to fill up with the extra lines of the description until you eventually just end up running out of space in the card. And once that happens, then the description ends with an ellipses. But at that point, your picture is completely gone. You can kind of see the behavior at play here if we go ahead and expand this. Eventually, all of our text comes in. And then as we shrink it down, that preview image is gone. And we can see smaller and smaller amounts of our text. The other thing to keep in mind with this is that we don't really get any options for text formatting. So the title is always going to be this bold color, and it's locked to the color black. The same goes for the subtitle and the description. Those font sizes are both locked to their current fonts, and you don't really have any way of changing that. This could be something that they improve in the future, and maybe just at this initial preview stage, there's not that level of customization yet. Let's bring in our Fluent 2 card component that we've built on the channel before. We actually included some pretty similar properties to this new card control, as they both follow Fluent 2 design. We can populate our card component with some of the standard default values that the new card control has, and we can kind of see some of the differences here. There are different types of cards that the Fluent 2 documentation states, so we can see these are actually just two different formats of available cards. I would say one of the positives to the previous card component that we built was that you can include these action buttons at the bottom of the card. This allowed you to have more than one action, whereas the new card control only allows for that single on select action. The card control, however, has a major benefit of being able to be used inside of a gallery. And I think for a lot of people that will kind of outweigh the use of a custom component for a card. Other than that, if you're currently using the card component, I think it would be pretty straightforward to add some more custom properties to it so that you could define certain things like the border radius and the drop shadow through a custom property and change it based on your use case rather than having to modify the component itself. And that might bring it into more parity with the behavior of the card control. A lot of this will probably just depend on your use case though. Just to round out some other designs here, we can see some uses for the card, like a card you might see for a file in Office 365 or OneDrive or SharePoint. And this is something you could put in a gallery tied directly to a SharePoint document library or something like that. You could use it for external linking or even as a method of displaying alerts inside of your app with a quick way to take action on those alerts. Lastly, you can also use this for some sort of banner or larger display of information. If we hop over to the Fluid 2 documentation, we can see some other examples of card formats that they have. So you have one that's very similar to what we put together in our own component on the channel. You have more of that Office 365 style with a file, or maybe one that's purely informational. And this kind of gives you an idea of some of the possibilities that they could add in the future. So adding things like those dynamic buttons to take action rather than just having the entire card surface function as a button or maybe even the possibility of a checkbox so that you can check multiple cards and take action on those cards all at once. We can't really say if those features are in the cards, but regardless, I think this new control is pretty solid and it shows a great direction that Power Apps is heading in with some more modern controls that are directly pulled from Fluent 2 Design. If you liked this video, give it a like and get subscribed to the channel for future videos like this one. I hope you enjoyed and have a great day.